Hey, what's going on guys? On today's project, I'm gonna show you how I installed this herringbone tile pattern on the shower wall behind me. This video is gonna give you a bunch of tips and tricks so that you can be a herringbone hero instead of a herringbone head. Roll the intro. So this is episode four in my bathroom remodel series in which I took the half bath you just saw and converted it to the full bathroom you're seeing now. Check out my channel if you wanna see more projects in this series. Now getting on today's project, the first thing you wanna do is find the wall you're gonna start on and find the midpoint. So I used a laser level to find the midpoint, but you can do it just as easily with a tape measure and a pencil. So here's an illustration showing how the midpoint should line up with your tiles. And here I use the laser level to show you on the finished product where the midpoint is. So. Once you have your, uh, your walls lined up, you wanna basically do a dry fit outside with the same dimensions, just to get a rough estimate of what it's gonna look like. And you can either cut the tiles with a wet saw, or you can do what I did and use a dry tile cutter, where it's way easier, way cleaner. You just score the face of the tile and then snap it just like that. So once you've kind of figured out your dry fitting, you've established the midpoint of that one wall and you're ready to go, you're gonna mix up your thin set. I use Schluter All Set to maintain the, uh, the warranty for my Schluter system. So make sure you mix it all up in the uh, ratio specified by the manufacturer. And then I took a quarter inch by 3 16th inch V-notch trowel and started applying thin set. You saw right there, I'm using 1 8 inch spacers on, uh, on these tiles. So I did a preliminary layout just to make sure that everything that I did out on the floor and all my planning was done correctly. And once it looked good and I confirmed that, I took it off and I back buttered the tiles and applied them uh, for their final installation. So going back to this diagram, I recommend that you install the tiles in the order one, two, three, four, as you see on the diagram. This way you can use full tiles to get the preliminary layout in place. And then it's just a matter of filling in the full tiles first and putting them in place. Again, using the back buttering and the one eighth inch spacers to make sure I'm in good shape. And then once you have the full tiles in, you go back and you make the cuts with the dry tile cutter to, uh, to fill in any of the gaps. So as you can see, I'm doing a lot of the full tiles first, and then I'm going back and filling in the gaps, continuing on with the pattern. Use spacers in the gap between the shower pan and the tiles, and because the shower pan is sloped, you're gonna have to fudge it a little bit to make sure when you actually run the level across the tops of the tiles that it's even. So as you can imagine, the center of the pan is gonna be lower than the sides, so you have to do a little bit of shimming to get it even across, but continue to check that line with the laser level so you don't get into trouble as you continue on with your installation. So here I am continuing up the wall, and once you start it, the bottom's obviously the hardest. It pretty much takes care of itself. You just keep laying the tiles in the pattern and go all the way up the wall like I'm doing here. So you might not have a shower niche to contend with, but you probably will have something to deal with. So what I'm doing here is I'm making the marks um, as they're gonna intersect with the profiles for that shower niche, and then making the cut so that I can apply the tiles around the niche and also maintain the herringbone pattern. So as you can see there, I had to do some creative cuts to get around that corner. To do that, I used a Dremel tool with a diamond blade. That's one option. Or for some of the other ones, I actually just used an angle grinder with a diamond blade. But you're gonna need to do some creative cuts just to get it around the shower niche. And if you wanna see a video of how I did the niche specifically, uh, I'll have that linked in the description and also probably a card here. So check out my channel if you wanna check that out. And here I am just doing the final touches. As you can see, when you get to the top, you might have some small pieces, but just go ahead and cut it to size and close all the gaps. So once you finish one wall, the pattern is just gonna wrap around to the next wall. So where you cut a tile, the part that wasn't cut is gonna wrap around, as you're seeing with that yellow uh, tile, it's gonna wrap towards us and just continue around the wall. And here's me kind of showing you what that looks like once it's done and that seam has been caulked. So following the pattern around the wall and continuing on at the bottom, start with the full tiles um, and basically just fill in the small sections at the bottom, again, using the spacers to make sure that you have a flat laser line across and there'll be some creative cuts that you have to make um, between the shower curb and, uh, and the profile that you see there. But again, you just wrap it around just like I showed you and uh, continue from the bottom up. So one of my biggest lessons learned for this project was to clean as I go. I had a lot of excess thin set, I applied too much, and I let it dry on the tile. So if you learn anything from me, clean as you go. 
So here I am around the shower valve having to make some circular cuts. So like I alluded to earlier, I use an angle grinder with a diamond blade to accomplish all of those cuts to get a clean circle around the shower valve. And you can just do something similar or you can use the diamond blade with the Dremel. It'll just take longer. And here I am after I made the cuts, I'm installing them around the valve. As you can see, it's not perfect, but the, uh, the shower valve comes with a plate that will cover up a good portion of any of our cuts. So here I am making additional circular marks, heading back to my angle grinder and cutting them out the same way as before. Pretty simple, it's not too hard to cut with that angle grinder and it ended up being actually a pretty good fit around the shower valve. So I'm finalizing the last couple cuts around the shower valve, but I'd like to take this time to say that I am not a professional tile layer. Um, don't take this as gospel, take this as a, I guess a step-by-step -step guide of how I did this project and got a result that I'm happy with, but also understand that there's other people who might've done things differently and might be better. So there is the, uh, the installation around the valve. It looked pretty clean there. And there I am filling in the last couple pieces on the top of that wall using my spacers. And then again, we're gonna caulk the top seam. And I cut the shower spout with these drill bits with a diamond blade. Um, I'll have a video showing how to cut tile. So I recommend you check that out if you wanna see that in more detail. So here I am on the final wall. Again, I wrapped around the tile pattern from the existing wall um, that we did first. And then it's just like before guys, you follow on the pattern. It kind of takes care of itself once you have the first couple laid and then install your spacers and, uh, and continue on with the pattern cutting as needed around the profile there. And, uh, and then you're just gonna go and finish up the wall. Remember to check the, uh, the level as you go up to make sure that all of the tiles are on the same plane and remember to clean as you go. The last thing you wanna do is, is have what happened to me and have all this thin set dry up on your tiles that you have to scrape up later. So clean as you go, check the tile uh, level with a laser level as you continue up the wall. And if you follow those steps, you should be in good shape as you finish the project. This is a public service announcement that the herringbone pattern generates a ton of waste. So you'll have a lot of tile to throw away, unfortunately. And here I am showing you that I was a bonehead and I let uh, thin set dry up. So don't be like me, don't have to scrape off your tile. Clean as you go. If, if you learn anything from this video, please just clean as you go. And then to finish the project, you're gonna need to apply grout. We use an epoxy grout and we'll show you how to do that on another video. Um, and then the last step is just to caulk the seams and then you are all completed. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video helped you out at all, I really would appreciate if you could hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, leave a comment with any of your questions. And also if you wanna see more projects like this or how I did the rest of the projects in this bathroom, I really would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and I'll be doing a fat giveaway when I get to a thousand. Don't know what fat means, but trust me. Thanks.